Hey folks, this is a base, normal, plain old Nintendo Switch. Missing the kickstand, but whatever. This is the Switch that most of you guys own. Some of you guys probably have the light, which is somewhere else in my studio right now. Uh, but this is a Nintendo Switch, and this is a Switch OLED. Now, that might look like just a still image of a Switch OLED, but actually we do have full video of an unboxing for you of an American, a US uh, Nintendo Switch OLED. We also have various images showing comparisons and one small video clip uh, showing direct Mario Kart 8 comparisons at max brightness. Now, we're gonna talk about this in a moment here and how I got all this footage, uh, but before I do, I wanna remind you, we are giving away a Switch OLED. So yes, folks, we're actually giving away one of these things that we're looking at today. In fact, the white version you know, like the one shown in today's video. Uh, if you want to enter, you just got to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, show up to a live stream we're doing this Friday. Now, let's just get straight to the unboxing, shall we? So, this footage was sent to me by a fan. Um, obviously, we have 72,000 plus fans of this channel, but this particular person was able to get their hands on a Switch OLED early. And as far as I'm aware, this was not obtained through any illegal methods that he's necessarily aware of. The person he bought it from, who knows what they did to get their hands on it early. Uh, but this does appear to be a legitimate copy or legitimate, you know, wholesale version of the Switch OLED. Uh, meaning that maybe some retailers might already have some of these sitting in a back room somewhere in the United States. I'm not sure. Uh, but what's interesting about this situation uh, is that they don't want me to mention necessarily who they are. They'd rather me advertise their son's YouTube channel. So big shout out to Mr. Zeke725. That is the son of the person who sent me this. Uh, if you guys are interested and you feel very appreciative of the footage you're seeing right now, which is an unboxing, um, go ahead and follow and subscribe uh, to his channel. I'm sure he, uh, his son would greatly appreciate a little boost in subscribers next time he goes to release one of his little, he, he makes like little short comedy clips or whatever. So here's the thing. Um, how did it come across where I have this footage and I'm able to share it with you guys and the images that are gonna be coming soon? And there's not really um, a, a magical reason to this other than the fan reached out to me I'm excited to show off that they got their hands on a Switch OLED. And I just asked them simply uh, if we could use some footage and use some of this and do our own kind of exclusive video here at Nintendo Prime. As far as I'm aware, we are the first outlet outside of the uh, the, the Japan one, um, that one YouTuber in Japan who, who got his hands on it early. Uh, we're the first English uh, person I'm aware of to even post a video like this. Uh, so I'm greatly appreciative to him. I even asked him about potentially sending it to me uh, so I could do some other stuff ready for launch or, you know, buying it off him or something like that. We'll see if that is something uh, that comes to any sort of uh, fruition to, to, to benefit the channel. But the big thing for me in this isn't so much uh, the value of, of having that early enough to do better launch coverage. Um, what, 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 what the value of it here is just showing you better looks at things that I feel like the first unboxing in Japan didn't do. Um, things like how it actually compares at max brightness. This was something I actually had to explain to him how to do because not, not, not everyone knows that you could set your switch to max brightness. Most people just leave it on auto and it'll adjust based on your lighting and that's fine for most people. But the reason I wanted him to turn on max brightness is because in theory, the OLED panel should be brighter than the old panel but that's not necessarily true it depends on what the you know the, the overall max brightness of the screen is there are actually bad oled panels where they're true oled but the max brightness is so low that it ends up not really mattering and as you're going to see here in a moment in some footage uh yeah it's quite a bit brighter uh and there's, there's an image of here like fifa uh, and a couple other games and um some close-ups on the dock we'll get to that in a moment but i find it to just be Utterly fascinating that uh, that's just the way that this is designed um, to be just that much brighter and that much more vibrant. And another thing that obviously stands out is, you know, I wasn't so sure that seven inch screen size was going to uh, be much of a difference. But when you see it right next to the normal Nintendo Switch, damn, like 
damn, it's definitely significantly bigger in terms of screen real estate. And again, Mario Kart 8 might not be the best game, and this is not my ultimate comparison. Uh, I have a comparison where I'm going to be tearing apart the system, tearing apart the dock, and thankfully the dock does look like it's pretty easy to take apart. You do need um, a tri-wing screwdriver, which I have all of the tools here to do all that. So, um, And the, the dock looks double layered. I find that interesting. There's like a vent, and then there's like a pseudo layer and another vent. I'm, I'm very curious about that. Also, uh, something I noticed, and he sent me images of this, there's these slits along the bottom. And these slits uh, are, seem to be, at least to me, he was telling me that he felt like that was where the speakers were. But the slits are almost too wide to me to be anything of note in terms of speakers. I think these are actually air intakes. Um, and that mesh there happens to just be like a dust filter, right? You don't want to be sucking a bunch of dust into the system. Uh, that's what I think they are. They could very well be speaker grills. It's just speaker grills usually aren't that wide on a platform like this. In fact, we've seen them where they're as little as just a little tiny dot. Um, when, you know, the current switch speaker, you know, doesn't have anything like that. Like I'm looking at it right now. Um, we have a similar air intake system on the back of the current switch with two smaller slits. Um, and instead of it using a mesh, it's using like a, um, a plastic, uh, little gr a granular sheet, um, to kind of be a dust filter. And this one looks like it's using a metal, um, you know, kind of a mesh to be a dust filter. Uh, what's interesting though, is he's only had this for a short while and already it looks like the mesh is dented. He's not even sure how that happened, if it was just going in and out of the dock, or, you know, what, what, what happened. Because he said he's very careful with his systems, uh, but it, it could have also just came out of the box that way. Um, that's something to, to note. But those definitely look like some hefty air intakes, and it's two of them, just like it is on the current Switch. Uh, so very interested to see, um, you know, if they've changed the cooling inside the Switch OLED at all. And we'll find that out on my ultimate comparison that should be going out day one. Uh, so... Yeah, so I am curious to see if there's any cooling changes. Did they change the fan? Did they change the location of the fan? Location of the heat pipes? Are they using a completely different board set up on the inside? Or is this literally just what's already in the current switch slapped uh, uh, in a new body with a, with a bigger screen, and that's it? Um, nothing else has changed. We know the chipset's the same, and there shouldn't be any speed differences. We do know the memory module should be bigger, and we should be able to show that to you guys when we tear it apart. But... Uh, yeah, we, we can't know uh, until we tear it apart what else has changed. Um, it doesn't give us a good look at the kickstand. Obviously, we see one angle where the kickstand is kicked up, and you can see where the SD card goes in. Um, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I, I, I kind of hate those angled, like, slotting in SD card slots like that, but they do work, and they are on other devices. I would have preferred if they would have kept it on the bottom, personally. Uh, but, again, they had the, such those long slits for cooling, they clearly wanted to put the SD card reader somewhere else. So we already know there's going to be a slightly different configuration, at least for that SD card reader, uh, compared to the old Switch. But yeah, it's, it, it, the, the kickstand obviously looks like it's massive, of course, which we should expect that it takes up like two-thirds of the back of the Switch. Um, and it definitely has a nice indentation in the Switch. So the Switch definitely only feels flush when it's closed, which it should feel flush, obviously, in that, in that scenario. Um, but yeah, th there's just a lot that we could digest here. Um, but mostly it's just taking a look at stuff. It is nice to actually see the LAN port up close. Um, I can't tell from these screenshots. It looks like it's wired for one gig, but it's so hard to tell from these kind of shots until we actually take it apart and see if that's actually a full gig uh, LAN port. I really hope it is. I really hope they're not running it through USB 2.0. It would make no sense to include one natively on it and have it run through USB 2.0. It should, in theory, be directly connected to the board which is a very good sign that it's going to be at least one gigs, which is bog standard and has been standard for quite some time. USB 2.0 is not capable of those kind of speeds, so it should actually be a more, a much more stable connection, especially if you're doing game streaming, let alone gaming online. It should be a much more stable connection through the dock. Um, that being said, obviously I'm very curious about that dock design. It is different on the back compared to the current dock um, with that double layer kind of thing. The air vents, notably, or what we used to call air vents, because we had those two slits on the original dock, aren't even located where, where, where you would take an air. Like, it takes an air from the bottom, supposedly. So what are those air vents doing on the back? I, I'm very curious if it's like a, the air goes, it flows in through the back and then da down through the bottom and up through the switch. I'm very curious how that airflow structure is. And again, that is something we'll find out when we tear apart the dock. Uh, but I, I do want to say a big thank you to the fan 
who sent this uh, to us and, and got some of the requested footage and requested angles, the unboxing and all of that. Because this is, as far as I'm aware, an exclusive um, at the moment. And I do not know if Nintendo is going to take this video down um, because they probably don't want a video like this out there because then that's them being, that's them letting some, letting them be aware that sw some switches have leaked to the public and uh, not doing anything about it makes it seem like that's okay. Uh, and it, it's probably not okay. I obviously didn't think we'd get anything like this at our channel. Uh, we are not a Nintendo ambassador. We do not get Nintendo systems early. We don't get Nintendo games early. Um, every now and then we'll get lucky where a retailer might be selling something a week ahead of time. Uh, and we just happen to snag a copy. Usually this is more true at mom and pop shops. You might see it at Walmarts, but usually if it doesn't ring up in their system, they won't sell it to you. Uh, but if you go to like a mom and pop shop and they happen to have some, sometimes, you know, they don't really have a normal system. Sometimes it's literally just a, a, a basic register. So they might be willing to sell it to you, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, personally, I'm really, really excited about this. Please go subscribe uh, to Mr. Zeke 725 down below. At least give him a handful of subscribers to make his, his, his child wake up and be pretty excited today uh, to see a little increase in potential viewers. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thanks for all your support because without all of you guys watching my channel, we wouldn't have came across a fan contacting us uh, to give us this unique opportunity. Uh, if Nintendo does request we take it down, of course, we will um, abide by that. It doesn't mean that we won't find some way to do some coverage, but Nintendo would obviously need to bind us to an NDA. We are not currently binded to an NDA because we are not working with Nintendo to get this footage. This is just a retail unit that came out to the public. And I find what's funny about this, if Nintendo does end up giving a crap, is uh, this <laughs> this is more advertising for the Switch OLED than Nintendo's done themselves since they announced it. Notice how Nintendo has didn't even talk about it in the Direct. It's almost like they're acting as if the Switch OLED doesn't exist. It's weird, right? Very weird. So if nothing else, they should leave this up because it's good advertising for their platform. It actually makes it look good against this current switch and gives people a reason to potentially want to upgrade. Anyways, uh, I'm Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Oh, one last note. I thought this was weird. On the back of the dock, it just pops off. That, 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 that cover that you put in your uh, HDMI cable, your power cord, and your ethernet, uh, it just pops off. It's not a hinge. On the current one, it's a hinge. This one literally just comes off. It just pops right off. We saw that on the Japanese video, but the difference with that was because we don't speak that language natively, we weren't sure if he just did that by accident and it was supposed to be a hinge. Um, and maybe he explains that and I just don't understand Japanese. But now we know there is no hinge. It literally just pops right off, which can be a little bit scary at first because you might assume you broke it. Uh, but it definitely just slots in on the bottom and then pops back in. Um, very interesting design like that. I feel like that design's not going to last as long as a hinge. Then again, maybe the hinges weren't lasting very well. I don't know. I don't. My hinges haven't broke yet. I got two different docks at my house. Um, none of the hinges are broken, but maybe that's just something uh, that has been a concern. Uh, and they figure that this is a more secure way to attach it. Uh, beats me. But uh, that is a, a change that Nintendo obviously never talked about, uh, is changing how that back plate opens. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.